Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to a little election update prediction video with RFK Jr. endorsing Donald Trump in all of the major swing states. I figured I would go through a potential updated election, an early look, because we're still waiting for all the polls to get updated, all the models to get updated, people wondering how will the dropout actually affect everything. It's a little bit complicated because you can't technically just go from the five-way and just utilize the two-way because now you've got RFK Jr. voters. It's going to be a little bit different. Where are they going to go? Normally, they would just say third party, whatever, but now some of them are going to go to Trump. Believe it or not, some of them will go to Kamala. Right now, the early numbers, from what I saw, around 45% to Trump, 24 25% to Kamala, which is huge because if he's getting a 4 or 5% vote in terms of these swing states, that's going to help Trump by maybe a quarter of a percent to half a percent, which is obviously probably would have won Trump the election in 2020, would have won him Arizona, would have won him Pennsylvania, would have won him Georgia. I mean, that's how close these states were, or I think it would, it may be Wisconsin stuff, Pennsylvania, but either way, this, I would say are probably all of the swing states right now. I think we could probably agree on that. Now, certainly liberals would say no, Virginia, New Mexico, they are democratic leans. And, and I would say that, but I do think, especially Virginia, that's a state that Trump can potentially win. You could take a look at this map right here. It's got Trump and Vance at 219. Harrison Walls at 208. So you can see all the toss-ups. I really don't disagree with this. The one interesting thing, I'll just get this out of the way because it's kind of, it's just one electoral vote. But you do have the main, I think, yeah, the second district was the poll that came out that had Harris plus five. There it is right there. So people are wondering, is that something that Harris really flips? Well, even if I gave that to Harris, and, and maybe you can just give Harris the entire, because I do think she's probably going to win the, the statewide main. She was up by like 17 in a poll there or something. But even let her flip that district, which... I mean, it matters. It's it's one it's a one electoral vote flip, so it's really a, a two you know electoral vote flip in terms of an aggregate. But even if you give her that, you give her New Hampshire. New Hampshire is interesting. I don't know about New Hampshire. New Hampshire was a state that I thought I thought RFK might have been doing uh, decent in New Hampshire, but I mean, they do have New Hampshire as a swing state. Yeah, I wonder what was the five way. Oh, RFK was only getting four percent. So New Hampshire will be interesting, but I would just say, let's just give her New Hampshire. Now, when it comes to this updated model, and another one I'll say is let's give her New Mexico. People were asking me about New Mexico. There's a poll that has her up 10. That's fine, whatever. Um, so you can see that takes her to 213 to 218. And then when it comes to the real swing states, you've got Nevada and Arizona. These are states, even without RFK Jr., I would have leaning Trump right now, even if you wanted to take a look at them. Right now, Trump plus 1.4. Recent polls, he's been leading. This is with the Harris boost as well, with a lot of these pollsters reporting that Harris has like a plus two net overall approval, which is totally ridiculous. So the polls themselves are erroneous, and Trump is still up in a state like Nevada. So certainly with RFK, there's going to be, when it comes to all of these states, it's basically the same impact. People ask, well, is RFK polling at 5%, 6%, 7%? Normally, it's between like 4 and 5%. And it was only going to get smaller because we're a partisan country and people know that voting for RFK, it's basically a wasted vote. So if Trump can get like 40 to 45%, if Harris gets like 20%, that's huge news. And even if Trump, it basically takes a Trump win from like, let's say he wins Nevada by 0.5 with RFK, he might win it by 1.2, 1.3. It gives him breathing room. And then obviously maybe even turns a state if he was going to lose it by 0.2, maybe he wins it by 0.3. A, a half a point shift, things like that. It's all very important. So you also do have Arizona. Arizona is another state without RFK Jr.'s help. I think Trump would win. Right now, it's very close. Certainly, you take a look at, I mean, in 2020, to be to be fair, it was very close. Biden was up by two. In 2016, Trump was actually up by 1.5. So the Arizona polls may be a little bit more accurate than the Rust Belt polls. Biden ended up winning this state, but he underperformed by about two points relative to him being up 2.2. And uh, so Arizona is a state that I do think Trump will win as well. I'm guessing Arizona might be slightly easier for Trump to win, but it's close. Certainly, if Kerry Lake is going to win it, I think Trump probably needs to win it by, you know, at least three and a half, I'd say. I think that's going to be pretty tough for him, but it is possible. It's certainly possible. So that would put Trump at 235. You do have the, the Nebraska 2nd District. I do not believe there's any polls out of the Nebraska 2nd District, but I will take a look. Oh, there was one. So there was one that had Harris plus eight. So look, that is what it is. We'll just, you know, that hair or Biden won it in 2020. 
And that's just how they do. Unfortunately, Nebraska, obviously, state, if, if it was just a general Republicans in, in this scenario would be getting screwed with this. This is basically gerrymandering because Nebraska state wide, if it, it was like every other state outside of Maine, Trump would take it and be a winner take all. He would take that extra electoral vote. You can see if she wins all them and them in Maine, that's that, that, that hurts the Republicans. Because normally if Trump takes one in Maine, then it, it balances itself out. But it is what it is. I don't think it's going to hurt Trump in the end. But I'm just saying if, he, if she does flip the main second district, they will have an advantage because they'll have that district in Nebraska. When in reality, both Maine and Nebraska should both be winner take all, but they're not. But moving on, you do have Wisconsin. Wisconsin is another state. I think with RFK, it's going to be similar in terms of oh, wrong one. It's going to be similar in terms of how much he'll help. You can see Harris plus one. We will go to the five way just to see what RFK is pulling at. RFK sitting at five right now. Harris plus one and a half. Um, and, and so that potentially helps Trump a bit depending on what happens. Again, I do think with RFK endorsing, you can't just sit here and say, well, now it's just a head to head. So this is right. Harris is up by one. RFK is going to boost Trump even more because some of these voters, they're going to go from not not wanting to vote for either and just saying third party to voting for Trump. So there's a dynamic at play. You can see 48, 47, that doesn't add up to 100. That's because a lot of RFK voters are probably saying I'm going third party. And even when you match up Trump and Harris head to head, they just say I'm not voting for either. Now they're possibly going to go for Trump because RFK Jr. endorsed Trump. That's how that works. So I do think Wisconsin right now, obviously a state that has had some serious, serious problems in terms of polling in the past. We see Biden plus five. We see Hillary plus 11. We saw the polls last year. It was crazy. I mean, I I do want to see some of these polls that they had last year. I mean, you had polls with Biden plus 10 plus 11. He wins by less than a point. This is the days before the election. I mean, this, this stuff is just... It really is crazy how bad Wisconsin is, and it just goes to show you how well Trump's performing right now. When it comes to Michigan, Michigan is a state, you know, normally you think the Rust Belt goes together. Michigan is a state I could see Harris winning, I think, out of the Rust Belt. It would be the one that she would be more of a favorite in. But even, I mean, look at these polls, Biden plus seven, Clinton plus eight. What did Biden win this state by? He won it by almost three. So there was a little bit of breathing room there. He underperformed the polls by only about a point. But uh, Mich- to me, Michigan is going to be very close. If you go to the five-way in this, Harris plus 2.4. So Trump possibly gaining, I would say, around a point. Right now, you know, if I want to be fair, I will give this state to Kamala just because I think re- it's trending the most tor- to her right now. Uh, moving on to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, I think, for sure, would be for Trump. Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, both are trending to Trump right now. Uh, you can look at the polls. But, but you know, I've seen things coming out of Pennsylvania where you bring Trump in with the RFK Jr. help, and he's up by like a point and a half, two points um, in terms of that. So I do think, and, and the last three polls, he's, he's only been up by a point, but he's been winning the state. So I like Trump for Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is a huge state. It is the most important state because it is the swing state with the most amount of electoral votes. Virginia is going to be huge. I honestly think Trump's going to win Virginia. I just can't say, this is just too much of a... It's such a super team they have that Trump has here. It's like impossible for him to lose. I mean, you don't want to jinx it or anything like that, but Virginia is a state. Look at these two. These are very good polls for Trump. Well, actually, there was another poll that they don't have in here. This this New York Times poll, is. I'm not talking about that. There was another poll that had also Harris up by three. So the last two polls have been Harris by three in Virginia. And do they not have... Uh, the performances, and uh, they don't have that. I was trying to see how Hillary was polling versus Trump and then how Biden was. But that Roanoke poll, it, very good news for Trump. I think he possibly wins Virginia. He's going to have RFK Jr.'s help in Virginia. He's going to have Glenn Youngkin's help in Virginia, who's plus 14 in terms of approval. In that same state, Harris is minus 10. That's not going to mean that, oh, for sure Trump's going to win because he's got Youngkin, but it's going to help Trump. Trump's going to campaign with Youngkin. I would have Yunk in there. I would have Tulsi Gabbard at, at, a, at the massive Virginia rally. They're going to have a huge Virginia rally at some point. Tulsi Gabbard, Yunkin, Trump. That's the dream team in Virginia. That gets it done, I think, there. North Carolina, I think. I mean, obviously, I have, if I have all these other states going for Trump, Trump's going to win North Carolina. The polls have been close. They were close in 2020. They were close in 2016 in the state. I'm, I'm not too worried there for Trump. And then also, Georgia, I do think that would get him over the 300 electoral vote threshold. And again, this is just based off of how it is now. This could change. Trump could expand leads in some of these states, possibly win the uh, district there in Maine, maybe New Hampshire as well. 
but there has been better polling, obviously, since they switched from Biden to Kamala Harris. So I would say this is a, a pretty realistic look at it. Trump at 309, Harris at 229. And I would say this is a relative nice blowout. You could also say Trump takes Michigan. He gets to 324. There's a bigger blowout right there. Minnesota would probably be the next state. I would wait for polling on Minnesota. The reason they changed Minnesota to a, a slight lib lean is because of these two polls that came out right at, this was during the Harris hype. So this was a month ago at this point. Now look, maybe she still leads by that much because she got Walls. Although I don't think Walls is very liked in Minnesota personally, but maybe she ends up winning Minnesota. That's fine. I'm just, I would say, well, let's wait, get new polls that come out. That The timing of those polls were really good for Harris because it was right when she was getting all of the hype. It was like a month ago at this point. So right now, this is how I probably see it. New Jersey, I mean, Trump had a massive rally in New Jersey. I, I mean, listen, all bets are off. If Harris has a bad debate, all bets are off. I think Trump's probably going to win by a similar margin he won against Biden, or, or at least by a similar, he was going to lead by a similar margin. Harris is really, they're pinning it all on this debate. They're the ones doing it because they will not answer any questions. They won't have sit-down interviews. They won't do anything. So they're the ones that are pinning it on this debate. And we know the media is going to manipulate it to where it's like, oh, she performed better than Biden, so that means she did good. That's what they're going to say. I guarantee it. They're going to compare her performance to Biden and then say she does good. But but if Trump really destroys her in the debate, this is going to be an annihilation again, just like it was against Biden. So we will have to see what ends up happening when it comes to that debate, which is in, what, 15, 16, 17 days? I think there's 31 days in August, so... Um, it is the 10th of September, that debate, but this is how I'd probably see it. Again, I would give Harris Michigan just because it seems like that state's a little bit more liberal than the other Rust Belt states right now, especially you go back to 2020, the margins as well. But, uh, either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X link to that's always in the description.